Well, this is kind of bad luck. <laughs> I learned that stainless is hard to drill. I wasted a good amount of tooling. The biggest lesson really, don't use stainless. My Rockwell mill has a 120 volt, three quarter horsepower, just a you know, regular standard induction motor uh, on the vertical head. And it's, it's okay. Uh, the biggest thing that I don't like about it is just it's an old school, you know, V-belt pulley. So whenever you want to change speeds, you have to adjust the pulley and, and it's not quite as flexible as it could be. And then in particular, the pulley that's on here is a five speed step pulley when it should be a six speed. Uh, so it actually doesn't line up quite correctly with the original cast iron pulley. Um, and so there's the top speed you can't actually get in the current setup. So the plan is to take this big, heavy, chunky induction motor and replace it with this. All right, so the motor that I have here is a 6374 Turnigy Aero Drive. It's, you know, it's a Chinese imported hobby brushless motor. This is made for a rather large hobby kind of airplanes, uh, RC drones, that sort of thing. It's pretty beefy, so this isn't the sort of thing you'd normally see on a quadcopter. It's theoretically rated at 4,000 watts, which is, all things being equal, about five horsepower. In reality, you'll get nowhere near that kind of performance out of these. First of all, the manufacturers tend to be rather optimistic with their ratings, so it probably isn't actually a 4,000 watt motor. The other big consideration is that these motors are heavily dependent on how well they're cooled, which is why they have, you know, big holes. So the cooling of this motor strongly determines how well it will perform. So if you have good forced airflow, then you can get pretty good uh, performance out of it. If you don't have good airflow, then the coils start to overheat and assuming you don't destroy your motor, you just don't get as good a performance out of it. This particular motor is 192 kV, which essentially means that for every volt you give it, you'll get another 192 RPMs. This motor is rated up to around 48 volts, maybe 56, which means that the top speed of this motor is about 9,000 RPM. I don't intend to be running it quite that fast, uh, so it'll be a little lower and it'll be geared down with a pulley mechanism. So I'm hoping to replicate the range of speeds on the current mill. So anywhere from, say, I don't know, two, 300 RPM up to about three, 4,000 RPM. The nice thing about brushless though, is that unlike a VFD drive on a, a normal induction motor, as you reduce the speed, you don't lose torque. So this should be pretty torquey, even if it's going, you know, down it. 50, 60 RPM. As long as it has enough RPM to keep the motor spinning and you don't start cogging too heavily, then, then it's not nearly as big of an issue as with a induction drive. Uh, this particular motor comes with two sets of mounting brackets. So there's this one that mounts on the front and it just bolts on. There's three, or I'm sorry, four screws that'll hold it here. And this is made for a propeller, which is why it's got this kind of captive mechanism uh, with a nut. And then on the back side. There's another thing and this slides onto the shaft itself and it's uh, just a friction interference fit. As you tighten it down, it tightens down these onto the shaft. Uh, I won't really be using this side, take that off, uh, because this will be mounted either with this plate or a similar plate. So this goes into tapped holes in the back of the motor and then this will mount onto the actual platform that holds it in place. So the final arrangement will be set up like this with the shaft sticking at the top uh, and then this shaft down below driving something like a pulley. Uh, I haven't decided on what size yet. I've got a couple options, but essentially this will be on the bottom of it. Just like the leather patcher project, since this is a brushless, it's got three leads. This will go into an electronic speed controller, which will be driven by a, just a simple PWM signal.
Well, this is kind of bad luck. <laughs> Right, so before anyone yells at me in the comments. I know this was a terrible way to do this top section. The interrupted cut, plus my mill not being super beefy, plus this probably too large face mill. Man, that this was not pleasant. It's got a terrible surface finish. It was really chattery, uh, not good. Uh, the reason I did this uh, is essentially just because my mill's not big enough to do everything in one easy setup with a smaller, properly sized end mill. The only way I can hold onto this piece uh, is with my four jaw chuck on the mill table. Uh, so I had to essentially bolt it down to this chuck, but the chuck takes up a fair amount of space on the table itself, which limits the travel back and forth. Uh, and it's not flat enough that I could just spin it in the chuck, which meant that I had to essentially get everything in one pass without moving the setup using the largest tool I had available, which was this face mill. Uh, if I'd used, say, like a half inch end mill, I would only have been able to get maybe about half of this top piece before I would have had to move something. So I couldn't move the piece because it's not flat on the bottom. Uh, and so if I were to rotate it, you know, nothing would be where it's supposed to be anymore. I could have just moved the chuck, uh, but I didn't really want to. I was being lazy uh, because the, the bolt holes are underneath the piece. So that would have been pretty tricky to try to get everything loosened and then shimmied around. So I just kind of, you know, sucked it up and used a not perfect tool for the job and just dealt with the chatter. So now I'm gonna flip it over and use a good size end mill so it'll be a much cleaner cut and then I can rotate the piece because this should be reasonably flat despite the bad service finish. I learned that stainless is hard to drill. <laughs> it's hard to drill, it's hard to tap. Uh, my drill bit was certainly going too fast. I needed it going a bit slower. Um, and they're just cheap Chineseium drills, which didn't help at all. Uh, so yeah, there's a few issues here. Uh, over here is a uh, broken tap. So I broke off a tap in there. I need to get that drilled out. I have a, a carbide kind of no flute drill coming so I can take care of that. Uh, the rest of them are fine. They had drilled and tapped all right. It was just very slow going uh, and not a whole lot of fun. Um, the other issue, the bolts that I'm using, they're one fourth 20, uh, is just a bit too big for this kind of width uh, or wall thickness. And so you can kind of see right here in a few spots, there's some noticeable striations where the threads kind of bulge out. So this wall on this side is really thin. Uh, it's happened in a few places. There's one there, one there. Uh, I think one of them might be this one is on the inside. Um, not ideal. I don't think it's going to ruin anything, seeing as there's enough bolts to take the pressure. And this is pretty hard, and the forces from the motor should be pretty low. Um, but yeah, certainly not, not the best situation. So for the other side, I need to essentially do the same, the same thing for the top plate. So there'll be a smaller piece of aluminum that goes here. Uh, I think I might drop down to something smaller. Um, thinking maybe M6 since I have those on hand. 
Uh, it'll be less fun to drill and tap being smaller, but it will also fit better. It won't bulge out the sides. So we'll see. That's what's coming up next. That sucked. <laughs> that was like two hours of misery. So I drilled and tapped, well, I drilled this top plate for, uh, what is it? Number 632, because that's what I had on hand. Uh, I didn't have any good metrics and matching taps, and uh, I didn't have any hex heads in this style that were any smaller. Uh, so I went for 632, and that's what this is based on and then I drilled it and that went pretty cleanly and immediately when I started to tap it I broke my tap off. Ignoring the fact that I only had one of those taps I pretty quickly realized that this just wasn't going to work. I don't have a sufficiently rigid setup to do <laughs> that small of a tap in stainless. So I went ahead and drilled out the rest of the holes for the quarter 20. They're spaced a little better so there's not as many issues with it poking through the edge, but it was not terribly fun. I did learn a few things along the way. Predominantly, I learned that stainless work hardens really quickly. So if you don't have a super sharp drill bit, then it work hardens and then dulls the bit more and you kind of quickly escalate. So I learned how to grind at least a passable new edge onto the spiral points on a pretty pretty janky Dremel setup because I don't have a bench grinder, which is probably the next thing that I'm going to be getting. Uh, so that helped a lot. And I also learned, uh, at least on my mill, that once it started cutting, right, so once it started going and pulling out a chip, just to let it keep going as long as possible. If I were to peck it, then it was much more likely to start spinning the next time it, it went in. So kind of the work flow that I found best for me was get it going. Once it starts cutting, give it some pretty good pressure until you get to a point where there's just too long of a chip and it might start spinning and then break it off and start over. I also used a lot of cutting oil to help cool it down and then also giving the, the bit time to, to breathe essentially, especially once I got deep so that it didn't rub too much and get too hot. I wasted a good amount of tooling. So let's see, we've got one, two, uh, three, four quarter 20 taps. Uh, one, I think this was a 13 64ths drill bit, which this got dull and I forced it too hard and it just exploded catastrophically. I think this is also a 13 64th. This is a real cheap one that came with this cheapy tap set. Here's that 632 tap that I broke. And then one of my center centering drills I broke as well. Forget how I did that one. But again, this is cheap stuff. And then this end is a, all rounded over to mush. Yeah, so only one of these, let's see, one of them came from this set and it was the first to go. And then the other three all came with the mill. So I don't know the state of them. They were pretty grimy and grungy. So I don't think they were super sharp. And you could feel after the second or third hole for each, it was getting increasingly difficult. Luckily, they all broke pretty high up, so it was easy to 
well, reasonably easy to get back out of the hole. I could just kind of back it out uh, with some vice grips so they didn't get completely embedded like they did on this side, like this one I'm still going to have to drill out. I think part of the problem is I only have these cheap T tap wrenches. Uh, they don't grip it real well, so they kind of slip. Uh, and even though I do have the, the spring-loaded tap guide keeping it concentric, I don't think when you put pressure on it, it's always an even pressure, so it kind of tilts a bit, which was probably what contributed to the breakage. So I've got some nicer uh, tap wrenches that are in the mail, so hopefully we don't <laughs> destroy this many taps in the future. Uh, I need to stock up on some new taps, uh, especially in this common size. Yeah, so I guess all in all, it was an interesting learning experience. I still need to take this, I'll do this off camera, drill these out to accept the quarter 20. And then I should be able to get everything assembled and keep going. I guess that's how it goes sometimes, right? Things that you expect to take 20 minutes end up taking two hours. Well, lessons learned, the biggest lesson really, don't use stainless.